What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. In today's episode, I sit down with Mike Moon. Uh, he is a drywall contractor out of Canada. This is his second time around with me. Had a little bit of a falling out with his business partner. Came back, ready to get some strategy for 2023. Speaking of this, and excuse my voice, I lost my voice. Speaking of this, we have Lift Off 2023 coming up. This is an online event for contractors. If you listen to this podcast, I fully expect you to be there. It is Tuesday, January 17th at 9 a.m. You can listen in your car. You can listen at the job site. And all you got to do is register so you can get a link at the day of the event. It's liftoff2023.com. That's L-I-F-T-O-F-F. 2023.com. I'm going to drop a link in the description of this podcast. So I hope to see you there. Lift off 2023. It's a live event where you, I am bringing in some really cool speakers to share some insight and strategy with you for 2023. So thank you guys. Podcast starts right now. Contractors all over the world are wanting more, more time, more freedom, more impact. The way we do this is through implementing systems, processes, standards. Welcome to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Here we hit business strategy, coaching, mindset, motivation, the tools you need for success. So strap in, listen up, and get ready to grow on the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Business Breakthrough. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Business Breakthrough. My voice is a little shoddy, but I'm here with the Mike Moon. This is his second time around. Uh, so what brings you, man? What would what, you call the meeting for? You said uh, I got a message from you. You said I booked another one. So how's business been? I know the last time we spoke was that you were working with your dad. Uh, you had some things going on. Give me a quick recap. Yeah, well, um, over the last little while, um, me and my dad had a little bit of a uh, falling out, long story short. Okay. Um, so he's no longer with the company. Um, so it's just me. Um, last time we talked, you were telling me big on hiring. Um, I did a lot of hiring since then. I've also had to do more firing than I would have liked. Um, I've also had a couple of people leave. Um, jobs are kind of drying up a little bit cause it's winter time, you sure. know, um, I don't know on all fronts kind of it's, uh, could use improvement everywhere. I think. I think I'm doing a little bit better than I was last time, but still, still not, still not the best, you know? Sure. Sure. What is, uh, so, so again, just kind of like a quick recap. So kind of things fell out. I mean, how, how's work been for you? What have you been, what do you, what kind of jobs have you been zeroing in on, uh, in the last, I think it was about maybe like three months since we spoke, <clears throat> you know, what is, what does job flow look like? How have you been getting the jobs? How have you been performing the jobs? What's been going on? Um, I've been getting a lot of of jobs coming in from, uh, Google presence. That's been getting a little bit better, um, than it was before. That's where I think most of my jobs are coming from. I just signed up with Homestars uh, a couple of days ago, actually. Um, so I'm excited for that. Um, I think that's basically the the same thing as Angie's. Pretty much. Are you... Um, I don't, I don't think that they do. It's not like a paid lead thing though. I don't think it's the exact same setup as you guys have down there. Yeah. It's a little bit different. I think you pay like a monthly fee for home stars or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. yeah. Only in America can you get away with charging per lead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit different in Canada, but uh, you know, so, Okay, so let's kind of zero in. So you're still doing just drywall, right? Are you doing any painting or just or just drywall? No, I don't have any painters. I I will okay. I will do painting, but I don't have any painters. No. So. I mean, do you feel like the lead flow is good? I mean, do you feel like you're getting a, a substantial amount of requests? Um, I think my closing rate could be a little bit better. Um, but that usually just comes down to price. Um. I think like leads have been slowing down a little bit, right? Cause it's winter here. I mean, I'm in Canada, right? So um, it's slowing down a little bit here, but um, I mean, for the most part, I, I think lead, leads are pretty good for the most part. I mean, if I wanted to scale up, I'd need more though. Right. And 
if I if I had a better closing rate, it'd be better too, right? But sure. Yeah. So you know, what's the big dilemma here? I mean, do you have any paint, any any drywall installers with you now? Who, who's working for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. So um, right now, I've got an apprentice. He's been with me a couple months. He's doing pretty good. Um, I'd say he's finally broken past that everybody when they're learning has that point where they're not making you money at first and then there's a point where now they start to pay for themselves to be there you know what I mean so I'd say he's past that point now um he's he's actually doing pretty good um I have a form my foreman is supposed to be coming back soon he left for another closer opportunity um he has to drive a pretty long way for most of our jobs. Um, so he, he went and worked for another place for a little while. Um, didn't really work out there. So I'm more than happy to have him back. He was a great guy. So, um, yeah, as in the next little while here, um, when my foreman is actually officially back, um, then I'll have myself and, um, the apprentice and the foreman. Um, So what's the goal here, man, overall? I mean, what do you, you you know, like I, I maybe, I don't know if you've outlined what, what is, what are you expecting out of this year, man? Um, I would like to have a boarding crew that only does boarding and a finishing crew that only does finishing. I think that that would be really the most efficient way to, to get things done, have people specialized. Um, I think that's a that's a big one, and to do that, I would need to make more hires, and I would need to get more lead flow coming in to be able to um, support that extra crew. Right? I think that's probably my my main goal for this year. So, so yeah, man. I you know, there's a lot of different you know. I would say there's a lot of different avenues to take here. I'm I'm just kind of curious. I mean, you know. Um, you know, looking at looking at the big picture, I mean, you know, it's it's more so about you. Like, I know that the system that's your goal. Like, you know, you want to have a border and a finisher. You know, like, what about you, man? What's what's the, what's driving you to be, you know, building this business? Because you know, I I I'd just like to know, like, what's you know, what what's your desire? I mean, it sounds like you know, there's never a good thing when there's a fallout with a family member in business. So, you know, what's the motivation here? Um. What do you mean? Like, what do you want out of your, what do you, what do you, I mean, do you just want to make a bunch of money? Well, I think everybody has a part of that, but that's not all there is to it, obviously, either. Sure. Um, I, I think like a lot of people, I've had bad experiences working for other people in the past. And I think I, I take pride in knowing that none of my employees have that kind of experience when they come to work. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, knowing that I, I I give people a good place to come to work, I I think that that, that sure. gives me a lot of value personally. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So looking at it, how many jobs do you have lined up for the next two weeks? So right that's now. the problem. I've got a lot of a lot of stuff up in the air. That's that's a big problem that I have is everything's up in the air until last minute. It's, it's really hard for me to get people to solidify projects on my calendar. Let me so, ask you another, let me ask you, I'm just trying to narrow, drill this down. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't yeah. mean to be disrespectful. I just need, I'm just trying to yeah. help. What, what is your, what is, what is your daily effort when it comes to following up with customers? What does that look like? Following up with bids. Um, um, it's not often that I have bids out for very long. Um, I usually am able to get it. Well, do you mean following up with people who haven't answered or people who said no? I'm f- following up with people that haven't answered, following up with people that have, you know, you know, told you that they're not interested, you know, or in any case, you know, really mostly people that haven't answered. Um, that doesn't generally happen very much. Usually I, I, I'm pretty good. I'd say like 
seventy percent of the time I get either a yes or a no right off right off the bat. So um, you're getting seventy percent. No, you're just saying they just tell you yes or no right off the bat. So in other words, you don't really have that much of an overlay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I mean, I, I, what, what software are you using for your business? I'm not. So you don't really know that, you know, I think that that's a misconception because if you're doing 15 estimates, I mean, I mean, would you say that you do about 15 estimates a month, maybe? So would that be fair? Yeah, I'd say probably 12 to 15 a month. 12 to 15, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. are you selling the estimates on the spot? Are you quoting on the spot? I try to. Uh, I okay. mean, a lot of, so a lot of times it doesn't work. If that that's way, not but... a hard, if that's not a hard yes, then your follow-up game needs to be sick. And from your responses, it's not. It's just one of those things where you're just okay if they tell you yes or no and because you haven't told me like, Hey, yeah, when I wake up in the morning, I make all my follow-up calls. I follow up with all my leads, you know, and I'm, I'm getting somewhere with this. I'm saying, first of all, if you don't have organization in your business, you're not going to be successful. You know, if it's not going to be drip jobs, which I hope it is, I'd love to have you as a customer, but it needs to be something to keep track of these things. Because when times get slow, you need to be able to access this information. You need to be able to have the bid right in front of you, the customer's name, address, phone number right there. And you need to be able to hit a call button and make a phone call to a customer who has a bid. Even if they told you it's too expensive, that doesn't mean they hired somebody, right? Yeah. 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 So I've that's your job. That quite a lot. Yeah. No, they, oh, that's way too much, more than what I thought. Okay, that's fine. Let it sit for a day. Call back. Hey, Miss Jones, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, I sharpened the pencil a little bit. Have you hired anyone yet? No, I haven't. Okay. What was the budget that you were thinking? Just so I can see if we're even in the ballpark here with my new figure. And then you would say something along the lines of, okay, I don't normally do this, but in this case, I really need the job for my team. Obviously it's the off season. So I'm willing to meet you halfway. How does that sound? Right. It's funny and you I mean, should like, say that because last, last night I actually, there was a job that I, uh, I got, the, the guy turned down the price, right? But I drive past the project every day and I've noticed that it, that was months ago and he still hasn't had anybody do it. So I called him back and I, I asked him um, if he's had any, if he's got anybody on contract to do it. And he said, no. So I basically just asked if we could just cut to the chase and well, he asked if I wanted to come and get it, get a, get him another quote. And I said, well, I don't imagine that this time it'll be much different than I did the first time, but where would we have to be at to actually make something happen here? So he gave me his number. It's not too far off of where I would be at. So I'm going to try and see what I can do to get down to that number. And then I might have that one. Let me um, ask you a question. Really cool. do, you, do you have work next week? Uh, I'm actually on my way to close a job for next week right after this call. All right. It's so right now you don't have any work. No. Before, before you do that, there's no work, right? So, no. so the, the idea is, and I want you to get this mindset shift here. You have somebody that gave you a number that they would 100% hire you on, but for some reason you're not saying, yeah, we'll do that. And the reality of the situation is you're desperate for business right now. And that's okay. Like, it's not a bad thing. You know, the reality is based on that price that you gave him, what was your profit margin? That's the problem is like, so sorry to answer this. I kind of have to backtrack a little bit. So with me and my dad, he, he was my project manager, right? He kind of ended up losing me a bunch of money on several projects. So I'm still kind of in a little bit of a backlog from that. So. I need profit to be able to get back in the clear, right? So the, the, the profit's really, really thin on that job if I take it at that price. So I'm, all I'm trying to really do is figure out how can I do it cheaper and more efficiently so that I know that I can do it at that price. And uh, just you're, kind of, you can't, and I get that. I mean, in any case, you know, sure you lost some money, you know, but the reality of the situation is, is I asked you what's important to you. You know, and that's why okay. I did it. It didn't sound like making a bunch of money was your number one thing. It was making sure your, your team members had a good place to work, a place to work and could pay their bills. Right. So yeah, but you're, if, but if you're, I don't you're have thinking, a... but listen, 
bro, I do this. I'm not going to tell you something that I don't do myself. I've been in this position. I've been in a position recently where the work schedule was thin, but you got to realize that look at the pressure you're under right now. You're over here trying to find jobs two, two days before the weekend, where if you don't close this next job Monday, you won't have any work when you could have locked in that job, took the pressure off yourself. Okay. Had a job for your team to go to. So you don't have to text them and say, Hey, sorry guys, no work Monday. Right. And then you sell your jobs with more profit. Cause you're going to come across more confident, right? At least the guys are busy. That's the, that's the mentality is that if you, if you just, that you're going to have team members, dude, the, you like, don't make any profit. If it means they get to work, like they didn't, so, that you're not keeping up with your end of the agreement if they don't have work to do. So right? should I just put off, put off the debt then? Yeah, dude. Who cares about business debt? You know, okay. your, your, your business debt can always be paid off. Employee wages can't. Dude, they can't, yeah. you can't put off employee wages, bro. You can always refinance debt. You can always, in some cases, file bankruptcy on it, but you don't pay an employee for a week. They're going to go find someone else to work for. Okay. You know, and I think yeah. you're playing it wrong. I'll be honest. You're playing it wrong. You know, you're looking at your business debt and you're holding that in too high of regard and you're trying to make too much on jobs when you don't have the luxury to do that. When you have, <clears throat> excuse me, when you have four weeks six weeks of work booked out, that's when you start playing hardball. And that's when you start pricing jobs for the profit that you want. You know, but right now, if Monday is coming and you don't have any work, dude, sell it for whatever you can to break even if you have to, just to make sure the team members get paid. You can't work okay. on efficient processes if processes aren't being worked on, right? If the guys are sitting at home, how can you, how can you, refine a process at least in the very least if you're not going to make a killer profit you have an opportunity to refine your systems because they're going to have a job to be working on yeah you know? yeah i get what you're saying that's, for sure i mean that's that's got to always be the mentality so that's why i say first of all you need a software i mean again i'm not dude i don't i don't i'm not gonna be like oh you gotta use drip jobs but dude there's nothing better imagine if you had that guy in drip jobs three months ago and he got a three-month follow-up saying, hey, did you wind up getting that job done? And he would have just emailed you instead of you randomly connecting with him, right? I mean, that's that's the power of good software. So when I say this, I mean, you know, dude, for the next, for this whole year, how many estimates are you going to do? Probably 200, 250, right? How many of those people are going to come up where they didn't hire somebody, right? And it's like, dude, you can't let those opportunities slip through the cracks because you need them to sustain your business. So yeah. you know, that, yeah, that's what I, that, that, that's how I feel about, it. <clears throat> you know, the so, goal should be how, how can I keep my guys busy and, and, and keep them working every day? Yeah. Well, so that was kind of the goal with that, having home stars. Now with the software, uh, with drip jobs, how well do you think that would work with uh, drywalling? Because you kind of made it for, is it, is it made for painters or is it, can it work with anything or work with anything? It's not made for painters at all. Okay. The only difference between painters and everyone else is how they estimate. And we haven't really built in production rate estimating yet. So, you know, and even if we did, you'd be able to use that or not. I mean, we have the same painters and drywallers have the same sales cycle. You get a lead, you go and do an estimate, you present a proposal, you sell the job, you schedule the job, you, you know, move it through a pipeline. So it's the same thing. Does it have a, um, a job costing calculator in it? It will. We already built that. It's just haven't been released yet, but yeah, yeah we'll have that in there. Um, you know, we're slowly, slowly getting there, but you'll have all those things that, you know, are important to your business. Sweet. All right. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think I it's think just important to start for a demo though. You should, bro. I, I, you should. And it'll be, I'll, you know, I'll show you around, I'll, you know, I'll send you a link, but you know, it's more about you just understanding that if that's your gold star, man, I love when people tell me that, you know, the employees and their culture is so important, bro. Like, there's nothing more important than making sure those guys have work every day and only it's yeah. inputs and outputs. You're the business right now. You're there's no, you know, corporate office above you making sure jobs are getting sold, bro. It's your effort directly is directly proportional to the income that comes into your business.
So if you're not waking up every day, calling every single lead that you have, calling every single person that you've given a proposal to, you know, when times get slow, you can't really complain because you got to be able to anticipate those slow times in business, bro. You know, like, dude, December and here is horrible, like mostly everywhere. But in November, I went out and did quotes because I knew that I needed to take every single lead to make sure I can get all three of my crews through our winter, which is December 1st through like January 15th. So speaking of that, then how, cause I've, I, I have a lot of jobs up in the air, but like I said, there's nothing, nobody ever wants to actually secure a spot on the calendar and be concrete about it. So You're not convincing how can enough. I, well, that's what I'm saying. How can I go about actually getting scarcity. somebody to scarcity? Mrs. Jones, I just want to let you know I have one more spot open for January. Here's what I'm willing to do. If you give me a deposit today, I can knock out your job and I can give you five to 10% off, you know, and you choose which one you want to do. I mean, there's a certain well, level of like arrogance that you have to have if you are in fight or flight mode because your business could literally close down if you don't get sales. Yeah. I mean, that's, you got to come to grips with that. You got to understand, dude, if you can't keep your guys busy, they're going to leave. You're going to wind up doing all the work yourself, getting that hiring thing going again. The reason you are able to hire these guys is because you had momentum into last year, right? Yeah. Okay. So you lose that momentum. How hard is it going to be to get back to where you're at at this moment? Very hard. Yeah, it will be. Don't lose the momentum. Don't let Miss Jones stop you from growing your business. She needs a job done. You have the workers. Why isn't she moving forward? Probably because of the money. Give her a discount, put a time frame on it and say, hey, listen, I need you to, we got to fit you in on this date. It's going to be yeah, uncomfortable, so, bro. So you think that it would be kind of trading pricing for terms in a, in a, in a way? So give, give them a, a price give them the price that they want right and then in 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 turn i get the security of having the job secured right now you know what i mean is that kind of what you're saying this. it's supply and demand bro right like if premium painting my painting company is booked out for two months think about this okay if somebody wants a painting job why would i discount the price I know that within two months, I'm going to get more opportunities. So I don't need to give away my, my labor. I don't need to give away my paint for anything less than the maximum amount I could sell it for. That's just the nature of business, right? Yeah, but, but if I don't have any work on point, money, right? it does. You, you worked really hard to get to that point, right? That I'm not at that no, point Bro, yet. what do you mean? I'm, uh, January, I had two jobs. January 1, two. Two jobs really? for three crews. We need to do 27 jobs a month. Okay. Holy. We're all, we're all susceptible to this. I'm just better yeah. at anticipating because I've experienced my first two years in business. I waited until January to start looking for the work. This year, I started in November hustling. I, told, I spent more money on ads all in November than I did all year just because I knew I wanted every opportunity. So... It's all about anticipation. So in other words, if you have no work, bro, you need to be selling it just to get the momentum going. Okay. Cause imagine you sell a job that covers your cost for a week, right? Guess what? Your guys are taken care of. You're not stressing out about that. And now you're doing estimates with a different energy. Like, all right, I'm good for the week. Now I can focus. But if you're, if you don't have work and you're going out trying to do estimates, dude, you're going to, you're going to come across as desperate. You know, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's just natural. Yeah. It gets hectic when you're, when you don't have anything on the schedule. And I, well, it's when I people, people are counting on you. They yeah. can, but it's, it's when people are counting on you, bro. And especially you decided to get employees. This is what it comes with. You know, people who don't get employees, this is why they don't do it because the hardest thing is keeping people busy and having that pressure, but that pressure is what builds a business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, here's the deal, man. And, and we got to cut short here. I'm sorry. I got another appointment, man. It's been a busy, busy week for me, but I, I, was this helpful so far? I mean, is this helping you? Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. All right. So here's the deal, man. First, you got to get your jobs. I mean, 
I don't know how else to say it. I wish there was somebody else I could recommend, but you know, without making it sound like I'm just trying to pitch you here, but it really is a good software. It's going to help you. Number two, you need to know who you sent proposals to in the last 30 days. And you need to call every single one of them, whether they told you no or yes. If you really want to make it in business, bro, this is what it requires. Like, I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's like you might get hung up on. You might get people saying, no, 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 I already got it taken care of. I mean, again, this is what success looks like, man. It sucks. Number three, you got to look at your margins closely. You have to understand what you're pricing these jobs out at. You got to look at your costs. Okay, because you might be pricing jobs at 50% profit margin when all you need to make is 30% profit margin just to get the momentum going for this year. You understand that concept? Yeah, I think I'm pricing them pretty low, to be honest, but it's okay. It, we need to get more efficient as well. So, okay. So, again, the trade off of low pricing is more jobs and more efficiency. Without, without yeah. jobs, you can't, you can't create an efficient process, man. Okay. Reach back out to me in, in, in two to three weeks, man, we'll do another one of these. I want to, you know, I'll definitely be there to help you if, if, if you feel as I could be valuable. All right. For sure, man. All right, Mike, catch you later, brother. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening to that business breakthrough. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transition this episode to a testimonial. That's right. So uh, one of our awesome Drip Jobs users was kind enough to do a short testimonial for us. I asked him some questions that I'm sure a lot of us have about what Drip Jobs is. Is it valuable? So if you would like to sit and listen to this, I'd appreciate it. You can sit, hang around, and hear what one of our very happy clients has to say about Drip Jobs for his business. What's up, everyone? I got my good friend Aaron here, Bounty Painting who just reinvented himself as he put it in his own words in terms of growing his business. Um, he was on a business breakthrough. So if you've heard of him before, it's probably because you listened to his breakthrough session. Uh, Drip Jobs user. And today he's going to share with us some raw, authentic thoughts. We have not rehearsed this, so it could be bad. It could be good. I don't know. If it's bad, I probably won't post this. If it's good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Aaron, what's up, brother? How you doing? Man, I'm, I'm great, man. Tell me, man, let's get, tell me your thoughts, man. So you've been using it for now three months. Um, you were not a skeptic. You really just went all in because you believed in me, which I appreciate. But again, that doesn't make up for whether the software is good or bad. So tell me your thoughts, man. What has it been doing for you? Uh, right out of the gate, it follows up. And even if you're good at sales, that is the hardest thing, especially, I mean, if you want to be really successful, you got to get good at cold calling. However, it beats everybody up. And if you've been told no by the same person two, maybe three times, it beats you up. That's just the way humans are. The best salesman I know, it beats you up. Yep. Drip Ups does it for you automatically. Yeah. One of the first jobs I got, I, I think I signed up in like October, um, maybe very early November. And instantly, um, I got a referral off the internet. And I set them up for drip jobs. It was my very first, and I know it's not this way with everybody, but it was my very first drip jobs uh, set up. It followed up with them. I got a five-star review, organic, complete, it was not related to him. Sure. Uh, he loved the communication. I've had, I've got several stories like that. You follow up, you give them a proposal. And it's not that I forget about it. I don't have to continue to worry about all right did i follow up in a day did i follow yeah. up if, and there's been a couple of times when people are like hey leave me alone i'll let you know when i'm ready you can disable drip jobs it's completely customizable it's it's made it pays for itself yeah i love that man and i think you know early on it's like well i think that's too much communication and my argument is well here's the deal it's either you have something doing this or you have to do it. And if you have to do it, then you, chances are with how busy you are, you don't do it. And then right. nobody's happy. So, um, you know, for anyone thinking that this is too much communication, honestly, do you feel like your customers are bombarded with communication or do you feel as though it's the right amount? Customers are appreciative and the, 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 the sum, the average customer, not the, not the outliers who just don't like it, but the average customer, do you think appreciate the communication? Yes. Good. Absolutely. Um, and wanted. point of view, cold calling is king. Sure. 
um, you, you have to do that. It does it for you. Like I said, um, it has, I'm your customer. Sure. It me more money. Like for example, I got an email and one of my drips is an email saying, Hey, we couldn't wait any longer. I got two jobs two <laughs> jobs in the last $10,000 jobs in the last 30 days because of that email. That's crazy. Here's the one thing. Anybody looking at drip jobs, go through and read all the drips. Because on the first one of those jobs, I always do an exit interview. Why'd you pick me? How many bids did you get? Yep. Yada, yada. And I'm like, well, I got your email. And she said, the customer said, that was your email. I'm like, oh, wow. so I looked. Yeah. But I was glad it happened. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, go through it first. So you know, when the customer responds to you, like what it is that you're doing. Now, yeah. some people think like, all right, well, drip jobs is like this, you know, communication thing. That's cool. But it's not just that, right? You can create proposals, you can project manage, like what we're trying to do is create an all in one solution for you. In terms of the proposal presentation, we just released an update on the look and feel of it. What do you think of that, man? Is it is it helping you in terms of uh, showcasing how professional you are based off of how it looks? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You look, that's one of the things I always get in a, get in an exit interview. If they've had three bids or two bids or whatever, my price is usually right in there closer to sure. the top. Um, what I get my proposals on is professionalism. Mm -hmm. Um, the way I communicate, which is all drift jobs. <laughs> yeah. I don't, it takes all of that off my plate. Sure. Um, in my business breakthrough in October, November, whatever it was, um, I didn't have any employees. I got four employees. I'm Huge. just now, I'm just now starting to be able to, to not have to be at the job. I still have to set them up. I don't have a lead yeah. painter. Oh, you're um, killing it, man. But I don't have to be on the job. A huge part of that is drip jobs. Wow. Yeah. Just able to schedule, communicate with my customers, uh, current customers, um, potential customers. It's for, for the price point. And I hate to say this to you because I like the price point of that for the price point it's, and there's no contract. You don't have to sign up for a year. You don't have to sign. No. And if you sign I don't even let any, I don't even let anyone do that. Right. It's a no brainer. Wow. My, I mean, I, my, you can't say it any better. Someone told me yesterday they would pay a thousand dollars per month for it. And I said, easy buddy. Yeah. Slow down. Slow down, pal. No, I'm kidding. I love it. You know, and it's awesome. Like in any situation, Aaron, like even me as a painting contractor and the way that I sell, realistically, I want to create more value than, than you feel like you're going to get. Like, in other words, I want to exceed your expectation. That's how you run your business, right? Like your customer right. pays you X amount of money. And then even though like you could do the bare minimum, it's natural for business owners that care to go a little above and beyond. And it's like, you know, I love that, man, because that's one of my goals is to like, wow you. And I think that, the, you know, the barrier is, is that in the same way, you ready for this? In the same way that when customers interview us as their painters, Aaron, they see the price and they instantly compare it to the people that came before them. And, and it's one of those things where it's like, well, this company came in at, you know, half your price. And it's like, okay, well. Drip jobs is on the higher end, which isn't really that much. I call, I say, I tell people it's three gallons of paint a month, right? So you waste your three gallons of paint. You could have bought drip jobs right. at 147, but listen, the other estimating and invoicing softwares are 30 bucks, 40 bucks. And that's one of the barriers of entry. People say, well, Joist is 30 bucks or QuickBooks is $25. And right. it's like, so let me ask you, if you had someone tell you that, what would you say to them to justify the 147 if they went for the advanced plan, which our lowest plan is 97? What would you say to them? I don't have any short answers. I had a car dealer tell me one time they put new brakes and new rotors on when they did an oil change on a vehicle that I had just purchased. And I went in to pick it up from the oil change. And I said, hey, did you get a chance to look at the brakes? And he says, yeah, we put new pads and new rotors on. And I said, not only are you not charging me for it, you're not, you weren't going to mention it. And he said, Aaron, here's the deal. He says, if you don't like me, you're going to tell everybody you ever met. If you love me, if you love me, the flip side of that, you're going to tell a few people when you remember to. Sure. You 
and I and every painter, every contractor out there is in the same boat. Um, the price, like you said, three gallons of paint, it's not like it's 10 times the price of your competition. It's a little more than your competition. It is also tailored to you. Right. It, um, to be honest, I couldn't accept uh, credit cards before it. it happens seamlessly uh yeah. to be my reviews i get more yeah. organic needs now because it asks for a review and at the end of every job in my exit interview i'm like all right you're gonna get a link to leave me a review please leave me a five-star review if not let me know why let me wow before i guarantee you you're getting 90 percent reviews every single time so it is worth that wow and it is dedicated to not dedicated it's primarily uh scaled to the painting industry it is. Uh, so for three gallons of paint a month as an owner or a decision maker in your company what's your time worth sure what's your time worth that's the good question what, right there what, what's your time worth i know what i mean i booked two ten thousand dollar jobs because i didn't have to follow up let's cut that in half Two five thousand dollar jobs. Sure. What's your time worth to follow up on those? Yeah. To send pictures. Yeah. To find the pictures. To do all of that monkey business. What's yeah. your time? Wow. It's easily worth that. Joy. Last, que last question. All right. So somebody justifies the expense, right? But here's yep. the other side of this. Man, I got to learn a whole new software, right? I got to figure out how to do it. How easy is the software? Uh. Every single software takes, I hate it because it's a buzzword, a minute. This literally took about a minute. And one of the things that I have, I really appreciate while I've got you on a live call, I'll say it to your face. Thank you. When you message and have a question, you get a reply. Hey, I screwed up this part of the invoice. This <laughs> in, all right, I'll fix it. And he sends me a video telling me, all right, here's how yeah. you do it. Hey, maybe we should schedule a refresher course. Uh, <laughs> Let's super, jump on again. Go over this one again. The, the tech supports there. It's really pretty easy. Um, in fact, I was surprised. We went through uh, my onboarding call and we went through it. And I was really surprised as to how easy I was doing it. It's, um, it's, it's a little more... I'm not, I'm, it's not more complicated. I'm not as familiar with it when you do, um, an invoice only, um, yep. if you're a contractor or if you have to split a job into multiple, you're doing some yep. this week. Some Those weeks. features are coming soon. So oh. I know what you mean. So no, it's important that you know that because <clears throat> even me, and the thing is people don't, some people don't like people just come in the drip jobs. They like, Oh, I'm like some tech guy. No, I own a painting business and I use this every day and I run into these things like, okay, well, it rained on Monday and well, yep. we're not going to go Tuesday and Wednesday, but we got to go back Thursday and Friday. We need a way to, to, to schedule those on separate right. days. So it's on the radar, man. And I love that, man, because the feedback is good. I don't take it personal. I'm like, okay, well, you know, we got to knock that no, out I, too. I didn't mean it. It's, it's an opportunity, I guess. It um, is. It's, it's easy to implement it. If you are not... Uh, tech savvy, tech savvy, and you're using Joyce or QuickBooks now. I got to tell you, I've used QuickBooks. It's way easier than QuickBooks. You will be booking jobs and entering people yeah. in in five minutes. And it minutes. integrates with nope. QuickBooks if you use it for yep. like your accounting. For and stuff. your accounting. I hate no. QuickBooks. I am like anti QuickBooks. I even at this stage with my level of technical acumen, I still can't navigate QuickBooks effectively. No, it's tough. It's tough. What that's really nice that drip jobs gives you as a selling point is you've got your own link and i put it on my instagram my facebook <laughs> everyone loves the link dude why wouldn't you yeah one job one job pays for it for the year plus yeah plus yeah it's huge aaron thank you my friend as always you always bring um, energy and boost up boost me up man um Thank you again for your time. Obviously, this, you know, everything was raw. So again, my goal is to get this software in as many people's hands as possible uh, for the for the mission and what it's doing. It's freeing you, freeing your time, it's helping you grow. I mean, what greater uh, purpose is that, man? So thanks again, bro. I appreciate you. No problem. I appreciate you. Have a great All day. All right, man.